Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, I will be showing you some good practices to keep in mind when you are doing a design for the DE10 Lightboard using Cordis and ModelSim, as well as how to use some of the tools a little more effectively. So for this, for this tutorial, I am going to be demonstrating kind of the workflow that I go through using a very simple design. You can see I have folders here. All that's going to happen is the LEDs on the DE10 light board are going to turn on and off um, for about once a second. So here are the files I have in my design. You can see I have two source files here, Linky and Counter, and I have two test benches for those files. And note the test benches have the same prefix, the same first part of the name as the files they're testing, and then they're terminated with an underscore TV. And that's to remind myself that these are test benches. One of the things I really recommend when you're doing any design is to only have one Verilog module per file. Verilog allows you to have more than one module per file, but keeping one module per file is a good habit to get into. And I also recommend keeping the module name the same as the file name. And this just makes things easy to find. If you have a module called Blinky and it's in counter.v, you're going to spend a long time trying to find where the definition of Blinky is. And similarly for test benches. All right, so when I make a design, first thing I do before I do anything is make a new directory. I'm going to make it here on the desktop to keep things uh, easy, but you should put it wherever makes sense for you. And I'm going to call this folder Blinky, because that's what we're calling our project. So I'm going to open this folder, and next what I'm going to do is make a bunch of subdirectories inside this folder. I'm going to have one called HDL, this stands for Hardware Description Language, you can call this Verilog. This is where all of your synthesizable source files are going to go. So any file that you want to synthesize to put onto the FPGA should go in this HDL folder. I'm going to make another folder called Test Benches. Now, in, in Verilog, you have test benches which are written in the Verilog language themselves, it's itself, but they contain uh, constructs that are not synthesizable, like that dollar sign display or this stop function right here. Those aren't synthesizable constructs. There's no good way to do that in hardware. Those are purely for testing. So any file that's a test bench should go in this test benches folder just to help illustrate to yourself that they are different. I'm going to make two more folders. One I'm going to call simulation. This is where the model sim project that we use to simulate the design is going to go. And one more folder titled Synthesis, and this is where the Quartus project is going to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move my source files here into HDL, and I'm going to move my test benches into the test bench folder. All right, next we want to make um, the Cordis project, and I'm going to use System Builder to do this. System Builder is very nice because it generates a lot of um, other files that are needed to compile design to the FPGA, such as the uh, QPF file, which has all the pin assignments, and the .sdc file, which has a bunch of timing constraints. So I'm going to open up System Builder here. On this design, we want to use the clock, the LED, and the button. I'm going to call the project Blinky, and I'm going to generate the project, and I'm going to make sure that I go to the right folder, so I go here to Desktop, Blinky, and I'm going to put it in the Synthesis subdirectory. Save, get the happy message that everything worked fine, and I'm going to exit out. Now if we go look in this Synthesis directory, see we have a Blinky Verilog file right here. This is the top level that was generated by, um, by System Builder. We have a slightly different top level already right here, so we don't want the one that was generated by System Builder, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. 
Now this is going to cause some issues down the road, but I'll show you how to fix those in a little bit. So once we've created our directory and have our files where we want them, we want to simulate the design to see if it does what we think it should do. And if it doesn't do that, then we want to debug. And all of those can be helped by the simulator. So I'm going to open up model sim here. And I am going to start a new project. So I'm going to do new project. If you have a current project open, you can just go ahead and close it. We'll call it Blinky. And we'll just go ahead and reference library mappings. I think that's generally a good option to do. That keeps things from getting copied all the time. And we're going to navigate to our where we created that folder. So here's Blinky. And this is model sim, so we're going to put it in the simulation. Now we want to add some existing files because we already have a couple of Verilog files and a couple of test benches. So we're going to choose this add existing file option. One of the things I really want to point out is when you're adding files to a model sim project, you almost always want to use this reference from current location option rather than copy to project directory. And what this lets you do is for model sim, you can reference the files in HDL and test benches. And if you do the same thing in Cordis, reference the files, then you're only going to have one copy of each file. And if you change those files, um, well then Model Sim and Cordis are both going to see those changes, so you don't run into out-of-date issues. And that can get very, uh, that can be very important because one of the last things you want to do is be editing a file but trying to compile a different file, and that can cause a lot of frustrations. All right, so we're adding some files to the project. I'm going to go ahead and browse. We're in the simulation subdirectory, but we want to add the source files from HDL. So I'm going to go ahead and add Blinky Encounter. Again, reference from current location. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm also going to add the two test benches. So I've got to navigate here to test benches and add those as well. And again, reference from current location. Now, if I wanted to add another file at this point, I can do, you can right click and say add to project a new file, and then that'll create a new Verilog source file or test bench or whatever you choose, or existing file, which would bring you up to a menu like the one we just went through. Um, and that's how you can expand your project even after you've created it. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile all of these designs. Fortunately, everything compiled, which is lucky. And now we're gonna simulate. So simulate, you go up here to simulate and start simulation. Here, and remember our, our, um, our project is called work. And here you can see the four modules that ModelSim found in this project. You have Blinky, Blinky Test Bench, Counter, and Counter Test Bench. We want to simulate the test benches, so I'm going to go ahead and simulate Counter Test Bench here. And this is what it looks like when you start simulation. You've got your waveform editor over here, you've got your project hierarchy over here, and signal names over here. So you can go ahead and take all the contents in the top level test bench and drop them to the waveform viewer. And um, if you look at the definition of the test bench itself, this is counter test bench, see so I have this stop signal at the very end. And what that'll do is the test bench will run through this initial statement here until it reaches the stop. And once it reaches the stop, well, it's, it's going to stop simulating, which is what we want. And because we have that stop in there, I can hit this run all. And that's just going to run the whole test bench until it gets to a stop. So I can hit run all. And see, the simulator hit this stop. And I can go look at the waveform and just see what's going on in the design. Now, one of the nice things about the simulator is that you can look at internal signals in any of your designs. So, and you can do that. So here's counter, and here you see this UUT, which stands for unit under test. That is because we have instantiated our counter module, and we've given it the name UUT, unit under test. And that shows up right up here. And if we expand this, we can see the assign and always statements that live inside the counter module. And if we click Right there, we can see all of the signals inside UUT. And if 
our module instantiated other modules, we could continue down this hierarchy to look at the signals inside of those. So say we wanted to look at the counter inside count. Well, we could just take this count signal and drop it into our design. Now, now one of the problems is this signal was not logged because it wasn't part of the waveform in our original simulation. Well, that's not a problem. We can just go up here to restart simulation. We're going to choose to keep all of these various features of the simulation. And we can run the simulation again. And now you can see we have the value of count here. You can change the radix to unsigned decimal if you want to, or to hexadecimal, and whatever you need to do to make debugging easier for yourself. And then now say we wanted to make a slight change to the test bench. Say we wanted to make our design go from a 2-bit counter to a 3-bit counter. Well, we can go ahead and make the change here. And what that did is now our project's out of date because uh, we've changed it since it was last compiled, so we need to compile the project again. That's fine. We can just compile all projects, files, and actually what I just did there is not quite right. I'm going to have to open this up again and change this in the correct version of um, counter.v and compile out of date. So that'll compile all the old and changed files. And then we can run the simulation again and you can see the waveform looks a little bit different. So being able to recompile a design while in simulation is very nice just from a uh, efficiency standpoint. Now say we wanted to simulate the other test bench here, Blinky test bench. Well we can go here, simulate, let's go ahead and end the current simulation and then we'll start simulation again and this time we'll select Blinky test bench and that's really all there is to it. So you can have multiple test benches in a single model sim project and you can choose which test bench you want to run at any given point. So you, you really only need one model sim project for any design. So we can just go ahead and run this, see that we get something that looks like what we want and call it good. Alright, so once you're satisfied that your design is working correctly in simulation, you can open up Cordis and try to synthesize and compile the design for synthesis for the FPGA. So I'm going to open up the Blinky folder here, go in here to synthesis, and here is that Cordis project file that we created originally using, um, using System Builder. So I go ahead and open that. It's going to take a little time as Cordis opens and loads all the project settings. And now's a good time to talk about simulation in general. So when you're writing simple combinational modules or um, pieces of hardware that are easy to understand, it can be very tempting to skip the simulation step altogether. But once you start getting more and more complex designs and the complex interaction between modules, being able to write a good test bench and simulate effectively makes your life so much easier. It removes a lot of the guesswork of what's going wrong in a design and makes you a lot more productive as a designer and engineer. So it really cannot be stressed enough that writing a good test bench is essential to creating any design of reasonable complexity. All right, so now that we're here in Cordis, um, I'm going to show you how to add the, pro the necessary project files in here in Cordis so we can go ahead and synthesize. So you remember that we deleted the original blinky.v that System Builder created. So if I go and try to compile the design, Cordis is going to say, it can't find design entity blinky. Well, that's fine. What we want to do is go over here to files, and we're going to add our copy of blinky.v and our version of counter.v. So you can right click here on files. For some reason, right clicking right here doesn't really do what we want. We have to right click on files and then hit add or remove files and project. This window right here will open up and we'll press this button here to get to um, the explorer to select the files that we want. 
So again, we're in the synthesis directory, but all of the files that we want for synthesis are in the HDL directory. So we have to go up one step and open up the HDL file and select these two files here, blinky.b and counter.b. We do not want to add the test bench files because remember, test benches are not synthesizable. They shouldn't really be a part of the Cortis project. We'll say OK. And now we can see our counter.v and our blinky.v. This blinky.v is our top level file. So now Cortis is going to find a module called blinky and it's going to be happy and not complain. And you can see that blinky instantiates one version of counter. And then once this is in place, we can go ahead and compile the design and load it onto the board. So that's just a quick overview of how I like to structure my project directories and set up my simulation environment, set up Cordis. Of course, there's a lot more little details. You don't have to follow this exactly if you find a different scheme that works for you. But what I've found is that if you spend more time organizing a project beforehand, it'll save a lot of time down the road. So that's all for today, and good luck with your hardware design.